Hello, my friends. Good evening. It's Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, and I see you all coming in. My name is Joette Calabrese, and I'm here every Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to teach you homeopathy, teach you what I know, show you how to do this, and for you also to be uh, somewhat part of this little community that we've got going here that we've been doing for many years. <laughs> and so for those of you who already know me, my friends, welcome. It's great to see you. Michigan and yeah, Mighty Members. Yes, and we'll be here for about 15, 20 minutes and then we're going to go to Joette's Mighty Members and answer some questions here and there. Washington, Laura's from Washington State and um, Lighty from Charleston and Middle Tennessee is where Kathy's from. It's wonderful to see you all. And we also have people from Ohio and Western Australia, and Ajax, Ontario. <laughs> Old friends, I see you time and again. Mexico City. So, um, Lissa, um, wonderful to see you here. Yorktown, Virginia. More from, an, from Ontario and Oklahoma. So today, we are going to talk about adrenal fatigue. And um, adrenal fatigue, in a way, as homeopaths, it's really not as important a diagnosis as simply someone describing their fatigue. Now, can it be useful? I suppose it can be useful because it eliminates the possibility that perhaps it's um, hypothyroidism that's causing the fatigue or it's anemia that's causing the fatigue. Um, but, uh, and, 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 and it, I must say that adrenal fatigue and those two and many other conditions can can work um, uh, simultaneously or can be acting simultaneously. But <clears throat> the most important thing for us is what is the condition, and it would be fatigue. Now, um, fatigue is obviously very broad, um, but it also helps us then to use symptoms, specific symptoms. And so we're going to be talking about how, you know, when I look this up in my repertory, and I look under uh, fatigue, I look at under the clinical section, um, and I look under fatigue, if you happen to have, happen to have Robin Murphy's Meta Repertory, fourth edition, I'm on page 2225 under fatigue, comma, general. It doesn't say adrenal fatigue, but it's fatigue. And so when we look at the medicines that are noted here in this particular rubric, um, we are going to be looking at it um, through the lens of adrenal fatigue. Now, generally, adrenal fatigue is not acute, meaning it's not something that comes and goes, has a natural beginning and a natural ending. You might have fatigue from the flu, but when the flu is over, then it's over, generally. And so we're looking at something that's more on a chronic level, right? So when we look at this, I can see some pretty important medicines here to consider, um, um, such as aluminum and caladium, calcarb, china, <coughs> excuse me, arsenicum, graphitis, gelsemium, nux vomica, natmur, there's phosphoric acid, there's some really important ones here. But when we also look at stress, under in the mind section um, on page 250, we're going to be looking at the medicines that are listed here under stress because adrenal fatigue generally is considered, and I don't know how perfect this is, how exact a science this is, but it's generally considered a condition that occurs as a result of elongated stress, stress that's been going on too long. So uh, when we look at stress, feels stressed or feels overwhelmed or is stressed, and long-term stress, then we're going to look at those medicines as well. And there we see the same medicines. Not in the same value, but we see arsenicum and uh, calcarb and napmur, etc., etc., ignatia. So 
This gives us the roadmap. It doesn't tell us exactly what we're going to do. It just gives us the roadmap. So, um, I love to see you coming in. Um, yeah, hello from Tucson. Buffalo. Hi, Kimberly. From Buffalo, New York. And hello from Florida. It's great to see you all. Uh, Chicopee, Massachusetts. Always loved that name. Um, speak more directly into the microphone. I will do that. Does, I hope that helps you. Some of you have, uh, I, I've, have uh, do complain that you can't hear me so well unless I speak directly into the microphone, and others have no trouble with it at all. So I will try to compensate as best I can and make this work. Um, Kimberly, sending you love, Joey. It's really nice to see you here too. <laughs> Excuse me. So let's talk about adrenal fatigue. What are the symptoms? Fatigue, right? But there's also dizziness sometimes. There's often weakness. Uh, there could be hormonal disorders, as I said, like hypothyroidism. There can even be depression um, and, other and other illnesses, even mental illnesses. There can also be fibromyalgia and insomnia. Now, many people have just a touch of this and a drop of that, but the most, the most uh, noteworthy condition is the fact that they have this fatigue. So we're going to, we understand that. We understand that it's fatigue. We don't have to know that it is adrenal fatigue necessarily. We just know that it's fatigue. Now we're going to look at what other symptoms are the kind of the constellation around it. What other symptoms are associated with this person suffering with fatigue? Okay. Oh, I'm glad you can hear me better. Good, good. Um, the, oh, and let me also say there can also be <clears throat> aches and pains, fibromyalgia. I think I said that hair loss, low blood sugar. Um, and even some people have uh, symptoms of uh, craving for sugar or craving for salt. And so what we're going to do is look at the medicines that are related to some of those um, those symptoms that are the part of the constellation that are related around uh, uh, this kind of fatigue. So I know that you know that it's, I'm sure you know, if you're interested in adrenal fatigue, then you know that it's cortisol is the problem. There isn't enough cortisol. It's not producing it. And, and cortisol is what's used up or, um, or used up, I'm not sure that's the word, um, depleted perhaps um, from stress. Generally, it's not from a small stress. Sometimes, more often, it's, a, it's an ongoing stress. It's a stress that's been going on for, for a, a long period of time. But sometimes, the, a person will have a, 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 an elongated stress, and then they have relief, and they're better. And they're, they're, it seems as though they're reviving, and the body's able to cope with the stress. And then, another stress comes along, and it's only a small one. It's just a tiny stress. And so then that they get slammed with the fatigue that lasts for a much longer period of time. And they're thinking, for goodness sakes, all it was was just a little, I don't know, a worry one night about my husband coming home, whether or not he was in an automobile accident. And it only lasted for a couple of hours. But goodness sakes, ever since then, I have been quite fatigued. <clears throat> so my number one medicine that I think is, is absolutely... The easiest one to determine that it's that it may indeed be correct. Um, that is the often the easier one to find, um, and we can use it in a nice low potency, such as a six X or a six C. We can use it in a thirty as well. Is Cali Fosc, or otherwise known as Calium Phosphoricum, and Cali Fos is particularly valuable when there's not only a weakness physically but also mentally. So it could be that the person feels weak mentally when after they've been studying for too long or concentrating for long periods of time. Um, I often use Kellium Foss or Kelly Foss for students who are going through exams. They may not have adrenal fatigue. They may not have something that's chronic, but they note that, that they're feeling fatigued mentally. They're pushing themselves very hard. Um, and I always urge them to consider taking Cali Foss 6X, 6C, maybe even a 30X or a 30C, and take it a couple times a day. And oftentimes that will revive them. In fact, I urge them to put the bottle of Cali Foss 
right on their desk where they're working away on their assignments, on their studies uh, for, for school. So Kelly Foss is excellent for both physical and or mental. And there can be a nervousness, of course. So it, like, um, imagine someone about to prepare for preparing for an exam. Um, they can have irritability. They feel irritable that they can't get through their studies. Or they just feel irritable. And also a kind of a sadness, even depression can prevail. I'm looking at some of my notes so that I can remember. I don't want to forget anything here. Um, they can also be, it can also be related to a long-term stress such as the last you know maybe they're in law school maybe they're in medical school and they've been studying for a very long period of time and there's a great deal of stress for long periods of time Kelly Foss can can be very useful when there is fatigue whether it's adrenal fatigue or not but more often than not if they're going to be tested that is what may show up as well as mental fatigue um, they also have difficulty sleeping. It seems strange, doesn't it, if someone has fatigue that they don't sleep well, but their, their central nervous system is revved up um, or dropped down, and it can be up or down and all around, and it's not holding tight. And so they might fall asleep um, at inappropriate times, like the middle of the day, and then they can't fall asleep at night, or they fall asleep at night and then wake and fall asleep and then wake. So um, it is a great medicine for that restless sleep, for insomnia in general, and for sleeplessness just, you know, in general. So that's Kelly Foss. Now I'm going to suggest to you, my friends, some people say, well, can't I use all of them? Well, you know what? I'm going to say we're always better off, if possible, to really edit, to get to choose the medicine that best fits the picture. And use that for a while. And if you see no good response over a period of days, well, you might even see a response within a day or so. But if you don't see a response within days um, or a week or so, time to move along and move on to another homeopathic medicine. Now, it depends on how important is it that you, uh, that you get this resolved. Uh, because uh, if, if you need to have this resolved pretty quickly and, um, and it's just not. And what I mean by that is if this is an acute situation and you need to have it resolved in short order because you're going through testing, tests, um, um, academic tests, uh, then you might want to take it maybe two or three times in a six X, for example, um, per day for a few days and see if that doesn't kind of bring things back up into clarity and and more comfort level. And if that's so, then you can back off, you can taper off, and then as you need it, you respond again, and you go ahead and, 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 re, and, um, and continue taking it. Now, if it's a more chronic condition, then I'm going to say, no, I would not say take it that many times. I would say um, if it's a true adrenal fatigue and it's been coming on over months, um, many weeks or months, then I would say twice daily would be a very good way to approach this. My second choice medicine. And this does not mean that for you, this is first and that's second. I'm just telling you my, why is it my second choice and why is Ke Kelly Foss my first choice? Because I find that these are the medicines that most often show up. They're most commonly noted in my practice and, um, and, has been, and have been reported in other practices such as Joe Pathies and the Banerjee's. Um, when I was working with, for example, Pratip Banerjee. This is the kind of thing that we used to talk about. And Ignatia is my second choice. Um, not second in line, but second one to, to discuss with you. Sorry if I made that unclear. I don't want to say it's second in choice, but it's my second medicine I want to discuss tonight, and that's Ignatia, I-G-N-A-T-I-A. -A. The second word is Amara but otherwise known as plain old garden variety, Ignatia. And I like this medicine in a 200. Uh, we can use it in a 30. Yes, we can. But I like it in a 200. And this is how we determine whether or not Ignatia is our choice. There can be insomnia. There can be a low-level chronic sadness or overwhelm, feeling as though life is just too big and the person is being swallowed up by, by the, the unhappy um, aspects of their life. Um, they, there are, can be mood swings and um, also the person can be irritable or even 
hopeless, almost depression. And it, in a way, it can be depression. We just, it's, but this is not what I would call necessarily um, depression where someone would want to out themselves. This is the kind of depression where it's a kind of a low level and um, there's there are other aspects that are related to it, such as the irritability and feeling overwhelmed. Now, don't hold me to that, my friends. Should you find that Ignatia seems to fit on so many other levels and this person is suffering from this tremendous fatigue, otherwise perhaps known as adrenal fatigue, if indeed it was diagnosed at, as that, um, and you find that the person has deep depression in addition to that and um, Ignatia fits don't discard this. Do consider it. It's just that it's more often not a deep depression associated with Ignatia. A hopelessness, yes. Also, there can be an indifference. An indifference to the things that the person normally enjoys um, because they've lost, they've kind of lost interest in what used to excite them. They lose interest in kind of everything. That's Ignatia 200. And how might we use that? I love it as twice a day. I like it twice a day. And for how long does the person take it for? Until it's no longer needed. So if we find that the medicine is acting, the person feels brighter. There's more spark to them. There's more renewed interest in their lives and in their, the interest that they up until that time had um, embraced. If we see that occurring, then we stop the medicine. We stop Ignatia 200 twice daily ta or, and taper off and see how they do without it. If they do well without it, they're on their way. The homeopathic has acted properly. If instead you find after a couple of days, oh my gosh, no, 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 this is not right. I felt better for a day or two after I halted the use of Ignatia 200 twice daily. But now I feel like, you know, I really need that again. So we use it again. We resume Ignatia 200 twice daily and carry on. And we're always looking for that tipping point. At what point can we say that this person is now enough Res the, the condition is enough resolved that we can taper off, perhaps permanently, perhaps not. If it's needed again, six months later, three, three weeks later, whatever it might be, my friends, we simply resume using the homeopathic medicine. Lovely, isn't it? Let's see if we have any questions. Um, hi, Frenicia. There are lots of people here today that I saw uh, just yesterday at our big celebration uh, for those who have uh, who have uh, uh, graduated from their our Academy of Practical Homeopathy. Uh, it's really great to see you all. It's wonderful to see you, Frenicia. We're still going through the lovely gifts that you gave us um, to go through. <laughs> so much fun. Okay, so now let's look at some other um, medicines that I that I like to think of. My next medicine, um, not in line of importance, but rather um, simply because this is a great medicine, and it is Arsenicum album. Arsenicum album. A-R-S-E-N-I-C-U-M and album, just like a photo album, Arsenicum album. Arsenicum album has fatigue, adrenal fatigue, or just fatigue, regardless of what, what organ may be underperforming associated with it it has to do with fatigue and weakness but there's also this frenetic aspect to it where the person is restless and dashing about and fixing this and cleaning that and organizing and at some point they just drop they're just beat and they feel very weak and I'm not talking about although overexertion can certainly be a part of this but my friends I'm not talking about one day or one night I'm talking about something that has that carries on and we see this behavior happening time and again where they feel frenetic and they're dashing about and they have to have everything just so and then they just drop from from the exhaustion so it's a lack of strength even um, and they can and there can also be Anxiety. Often it's chronic anxiety, kind of anxiety where the person can even have a panic attack and they feel as though they're never going to get better. Life is really awful. I, can, I think I'll only get worse. I'm very sick. 
I'm going to get sicker. This is too much. I don't know what to do. I just can't handle this. And that is our Seneca album. What potency, what frequency? I like to use our Seneca album generally for this kind of condition in a 200C once or twice a day for a few days and test it out, my friends. These medicines are not supplements nor vitamins, so they're not to be taken forevermore. You take them until there's an improvement, and once there's improvement that's settled in, then we back off and we taper away. Now, if there's no improvement over a period of a few days or so, what do we do? Abort. Get out, get rid of it. You're not going to use a medicine that doesn't act. I want you to see some kind of improvement, even a small improvement, even if the fatigue remains, but now the, the, the depression has lifted. Now, the insomnia is not as, as intense. The sleep is restoring. And the person is feeling a little more calm. They might still have the fatigue, yet there are other aspects of their suffering that has let up, has resolved, or at least softened to a certain degree. Okay, let's see. I'm going to give you one more medicine. And that is where we go. It's, it is phosphoric acid. Phosphoric, P-H-O-S-P-H-O-R-I-C, phosphoric acid or acidum, phosphoricum acidum, phosphoric acid. <laughs> well, we have lots of different names, abbreviations for some of these homeopathic medicines. And for this is also to do with weakness, but phosphoric acid is often, my friends, associated with overuse of drugs. Oh, using drugs, they can weaken the system. They can cause a fatigue. Now, what's overusing drugs? In my estimation, my friends, any use of drugs is overuse. So if somebody just had surgery, which was, un they had no choice. It was um, um, something they had to do. And they had, of course, they had drugs. They had to have general anesthesia. They had to have antibiotics, probably uh, something to relax them beforehand, afterwards, pain relievers, et cetera, et cetera. And then after that surgery, they have fatigue. My friends, I see that as a picture of phosphoric acid or phosphoricum acidum. And I like to use that in a 30 or a 200 C twice daily. So what other ways might drugs cause trouble? Well, how about somebody who's on drugs regularly every day? For, forget the acutes. There is no surgery. It's just blood pressure drugs every day, birth control pills every day. That can set up a, uh, a need for a phosphoric acid. But there's something a little different about this person. It's not just that they're weak, my friends. It is also that they are indifferent. There's an indifference. They lose interest in life. They spend a lot of time on the sofa. And they have no interest in tasks, taking on their general, their usual tasks. They don't want to work. And so this is a great medicine for that kind of a circumstance associated with adrenal fatigue or any other fatigue for that matter. All right. Did I not tell you what potency for our Senecum album? I, I believe I, I said 200C. Okay, my friends, there are many more. I mean, we could spend the evening going over this, but... I wanted to give you the top medicines that I see most useful for adrenal fatigue or plain old garden variety fatigue. And so, my friends, um, I'm going to click over to uh, Joette's Mighty Members and answer questions there. And, uh, and then I'll see you, those of you who are not clicking over. I'll see you next week. God bless you all. And I'll see my friends now in Joette's Mighty Members.